Hey folks, welcome back to the Fidget Crew. So today we are looking at the new OpenAI product, which is a browser codenamed Atlas. Um, it launched today, a uh, really interesting product. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a test run. This won't be our usual set of tests. This is more of a first reactions. So let's dive in. All right, so we have a ChatGPT Atlas loaded up. It should look pretty familiar as a browser, tab row at the top, account top right. And then the main difference at first glance here is that the, the landing page for new tabs is of course the ChatGPT input bar um, with a lot of the same tools that you know and love from the ChatGPT chat client, as well as this new feature tab search, which is specific to the browser environment and browser memory you can turn on explicitly as well. You can also select your models. It's the same options as you'll find in the ChatGPT client as well. So just to show uh, how this works and what it looks like with a with a normal search query. We'll start with a uh, kind of a typical query, just asking about some recent news. In this case, uh, we wanted to get its thoughts and find resources on the browser company acquisition. So they just closed, I think, six hundred and ten million. Go into Atlassian, and the fun timing of that is that the actual deal was announced long ago, but closed today on the day where OpenAI announces a new browser. So I have a simple search query typed in here. I want to go, instead of doing any sort of prompt engineering, I want to enter it as people would be used to entering search queries into Google. So we're just saying browser company acquisition and we'll see what we get as a response. Uh, they've obviously tuned this to be as, as quick as possible, but still the searching takes a little bit of time and then it dives right into responding. The response here is structured similarly to a uh, to a response with search tool turned on in the ChatGPT client. Mm -hmm. And in this case, because it's a browser, search is always turned on by default. Uh, it gives you a row of images at the top. As Chris mentioned, the browser company and their main product, their browser product got acquired for uh, 610 million. So we get some good details right at the top. And then uh, they talk a little bit more, some like high level points that are useful. This is again, exactly what we would expect out of a normal ChatGPT search result. Yep. I'm not sure if it's new to have rows of images per point. I haven't seen that in ChatGPT GPT client, but I don't use web search so much. And then as always, we get our sources at the bottom. Uh, because this gets us into a chat thread, we can do follow-ups. But what's different about this browser interface is we have these other sort of uh, a la Google, these other ways to view the same query. And so if we go over to search, it actually shows the results that were found in that yeah. search. So uh, it's very much like what you'd expect if you did a Google search, yep. right? Just links and information, no actual summarization. And then you've got the other tabs like- Like images. And if you, you kind of notice when I switched over to images, it did a little load. Yep. It didn't have the all the images preloaded. Uh, it seems like the images it was showing in the main response were specific to the specific. section of the response and yep. what was specifically being discussed. And then this is a general image search uh, and not a very deep one at that. You can mm -hmm. always go off to Google, Google images, it takes us uh, to Google Images without preserving the chat. I wonder, can I go back to the chat? Yes. Then they also have similar to uh, the search results and the images tab. We can also see a list of videos. This will look a lot like, again, a truncated version of what you'll see on the Google videos page if you do a similar search. And then finally news, again, some more of the same idea. So this is very much just like a at parity, what you expect from a browser, especially when you do a search. And then they've added a whole lot of other features to make it a little bit more uh, AI first. So should we move into those? Yeah, let's let's do it. So we want to dive in, and first we're going to take a look at this uh, tab search tool. So the ability to reason across information that you have pulled up in different tabs. We've gone through, and Chris helped us pull up a bunch of recipes. The idea is that we're setting the scene for ChatGPT. These are the recipes we want to cook in a week, and so we have to do our weekly shopping. And so we want it to first look through all of these various recipes, hopefully deal with these pop-ups and ads. I'll leave some of them open. And then we can see if it's able to aggregate the ingredients across all of them yeah. and give us a, a shopping list for the week. This has been in like Bing or Copilot for a while or whatever, but like instead of you having to say manually move over uh, context or content, you know, people often will have lots of tabs and lots of context open. Uh, how well can I actually like handle that? It's essentially a rag test. Like how, how well can it pull out information? Yeah, and you can imagine there's also a research angle to this too. Like you can end up being 10 tabs deep with research papers you're trying to read or look at or summarize. And you can just say, hey, yeah, give me a breakdown of how these are similar or not or what, what's the shared content. All right, let's send it off. Interesting. Tabs are just not, it's just not even the same. Right. So 
we're struggling here with tab search. As soon as we put tab search, it, the, we lose the search button. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like tab search is literally just a way to search through our tabs. Like yeah. without, it's not ChatGPT doing the searching, no. it's us doing the searching with text. Yeah, so we, we can just do... turn on agent mode for this, or do we... Uh, Doc, uh, it chose it, this. I think if you go, so that's like filtering through tabs. If you hit the tools again, I think there's another tab related thing, like add tabs, so add tabs. Is that adding Okay, so yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so we should have to do that. I think oh, you I'm curious really? what happens if we just ask it flat. Yeah, let's just ask it flat. So let's go ahead and just send it off. Let's see what um, happens. And see if it's able to be like, oh, this means like multiple things. I'll need a list of all the recipes. What did it pull up? What is it? These aren't the links, right? Healthline, simple home edit. Listing, uh, listing tabs. tabs. Okay, so it might be getting the tool pulled, correct? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Can you please what? copy? All right, hey, so let's we're... retry the prompt with agent mode, see if that helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it does but, seem but like. This is weird that out the box, like, to me, the intention of agent mode, and we will test that, that was going to be next, but this is surprising that it doesn't just kind of out the box know that these sources exist and you can. Maybe we can opt them in, but. If it's only one tab at a time, that's you know not as useful as having all your tabs open or all your tabs like accessible. Um, okay. It says okay. it's starting. So it looks like it spun up a VM to try to get around its tab restriction, tab read restrictions. It's, it's continuous. It's, it's, it's retrying. Crazy. It's not looking like it's able to access the other tabs, which is just like, wow. you know, you it's it's it, this is a limitation that one can work around. Yeah. Uh, but this is supposed to have sort of domain over your browser, and this is frankly like, kind of we got to just your average user. I just assume it can see everything in my browser. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's kind of the thing. It's not very intuitive that like you can only do single tab search. That's kind of conceptually the same as copy pasting the page. So yeah, this is clearly uh, it's not able to read other tabs, um, which is strange. It also should be able to get at least the the addresses of those tabs from yeah, yeah, yeah. from the history. Yeah. So. Um, it's clearly a limitation here with like browser knowledge and memory. I think what we're going to do now is uh, just give it a list of the websites and see if, if on a reasoning level it can handle the complexity of that task all in one thread. Okay. So there is this weird behavior when you paste a URL at the beginning of the message, it'll truncate the rest of the message and then offer a quick jump to that URL. We can put the URLs in line. We have some other workarounds. You can go to an individual tab, pull up the, the sidecar via this Ask Chat GPT button in the top right, and then you can ask questions about that. So then it grabs the ingredients, which if we scroll down. It's like any good recipe blog, you must hear the entire history of this person's life leading up to the moment they eat the duck. And more importantly, see five ads along the way. Yeah. Or more. None of whom are sponsors, so please subscribe to the Future Crew. Helps grow the <laughs> channel. Okay, so <laughs> after, after minutes of scrolling, <laughs> We found the actual recipe. It kind of shows how this, even even just this uh, opening the sidecar on a single recipe could save you some time, uh, you know, and we can then verify that it did pull out the correct ingredients. Um, so this is how you can do it in one. You could also then continue that thread in another tab by pulling it back up uh, and then selecting that specific conversation. Now we do want to see if agent mode can handle doing them all at once, so we'll test that now. We got the list of the URLs for the five recipes, and we'll see if agent mode can handle collecting all the ingredients. Where's the magic little cursor? I expect it to go click the tab and click the tab. The magic cursor here is just not moving. Yeah. <laughs> Checking network status. What's wrong with this thing? Oh, sh okay. Um, yeah, so we hit another issue. The VM thing wasn't working. With no mention to, ta to the tabs that we have open, we just give it the links and it seems to be able to now actually go use the, the normal web search tool to gather the information. But overall, like, Chris, how, how we feel, like, I don't know. It, it's tough that for a fairly simple task, we had to fiddle with it so much. The promise of these tools is that there's just like a text bar, you kind of tell it what you want, and it figures out any sort of ambiguity in there and is able to give you something useful. And we were hitting a lot of dead ends. Like, if you're in the AI weeds, I could see making a case that like, hey, you could use the browser because then you can log into sources that are normally firewall blocked and maybe that's useful. But not reasoning over tabs really felt like table stakes to me. I, I'm struggling to see use cases where I would go, oh my God, I really need to use the browser for this now. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is like if you Find yourself using Google less and less in ChatGPT more and more. Now your browser can default to ChatGPT instead of Google. I think that's the main thing. Right. Nothing game changing. Yeah, it's it's now struggling again. It's like confused and trying to open tabs. Like 
I don't understand why the agent cannot check a couple links that we explicitly gave it. Make a new tab. We will turn on web search, but not agent. Send the same thing again. Well, no, it's well, uh, no, it did. They just didn't show up at the top. I think it just opened all the weird social media links on each of these pages too. So this was far more successful. This was far more successful. So yeah, we, we were struggling for a while. Agent mode is clearly not general enough yet for these sorts of tasks. It was getting stuck in like issues using its own environment. The the sort of harness that's provided to a normal chat conversation by ChatGPT in the browser environment here is again, not helping with this task. We had to default to like normal web search. And as Chris was saying, this is something you can do in the existing client, which makes the browser valuable as essentially a shortcut to the existing experience in the case of this scenario. Um, you know, we wanna see where like having the agent integration, again, something that you can do in the chat client you know, is maybe helpful. So uh, now that it's aggregated all these ingredients, I'll ask it to like build an Amazon shopping cart, Amazon fresh shopping cart with all these ingredients in it. We'll see if we can do that. It's talking about like, timeout errors there's all... all right so after some debugging we figured out that agent mode was actually having some transient error maybe a stale token of some sort uh, a full reset of the browser and clearing all our tabs was able to get it to work again so we are going to retry uh the step where we have the aggregated list of ingredients and we're going to see if it can build the amazon shopping cart successfully. It correctly recognized that we needed to sign in in order to add anything to the cart on Amazon Fresh. That was not a limitation I knew about. In. I had to tell it to restart now. Where it's, yeah. The stability of this tool is, is like so not ready for prime time and yet they're launching the product as if it is. Oh, it's gonna get you that $108 duck, son. 38 one actually made more sense, I guess. Okay, so after a hard fought battle here, getting, getting agent mode to just be able to add something to an Amazon cart, we are finally at the point where it's building out our shopping list. It's taken quite a while. Uh, you know, each item takes it roughly 30 seconds to a minute, but it is following the instructions. I'm heartened to find that it didn't opt for the $154 Iberico beef steak. It's good. It knows it's out of the budget. It doesn't even know the budget, but it knows that's not in it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's not in the budget. Oh, a minute and a half later, it got some broccoli. Look at that. Well, so here's the problem. Like, if this was trustworthy and slow, you could just set it off and come back, but the, the repeated failures means yeah, yeah if it were trustworthy and slow you could leave it if it were untrustworthy but fast you could work with it directly it's like slow and untrustworthy and so it's like hard for it to be useful okay and then it returns after three ingredients fuck's sake man uh, <laughs> like, and this was one of the examples right we're not even stretching here this was literally one of the demos was filling i think it was a doordash card right and maybe you choose doordash card because like two items is a normal order like it isn't something that needed to be sped up now building a a, a cart for the whole week yes like that that's a that's a right. whole endeavor but clearly it's not capable of such a long horizon task yet without constant human intervention and it taking way longer than it would take a human so i think in terms of its it's like usefulness for long running tasks it's still not there. Is it going to save you time on the easier tasks that it can do? It's still not there. The promise of these visually enabled agents that can you know, use a browser or use an environment that they can see visually is that it opens up new tasks. In terms of these, as we're saying, these longer horizon tasks, still not ready yet, but we can still get a sense of its like visual understanding and its ability to do sort of creative reasoning uh, over visual medium. And so we'll get that next test set up. We have pulled up our Vive Bench site, which is a, a set of, it's, a, it's an arena for LLMs in these sort of creative domains that are hard to verify deterministically and require human input. And so what we're going to do is ask the LLM to vote on a couple pairs of outputs here, and we'll see if we agree with agent modes uh, vibes or its creative reasoning essentially send it all right let's send it off we're asking it to vote on five a b pairs and we'll be keeping an eye here to see if we agree with its uh decision on which is better i think on this one the left output is a clear winner um i, I don't remember which model made that one but uh definitely a generation or two ahead oh, and it did that the agent correctly selected a now that obviously could have been a 50 50 fluke so now let's see um uh, it'll be interesting to see how it deals with these 3D previews that are more zoomed in. Based on what it can see now, I think the left one is a clear winner, and it went for that without zooming in or out. I didn't give it any instructions on uh, that it could zoom in and out of the 3D previews. Ooh, this is closer. This one's a little closer. We'll see what it, what it goes with. Oh, okay. Hey. When it picked Gemini 2.5 Pro's uh, 
more minimalist, minimalist rendition than Opus's busier output. Vote for B. I, again, again, I agree with this. So we're starting to see where it's like the the technology behind this is very promising and enables new use cases absolutely. Um, and the way that it's wired up as a longer running agent maybe takes use cases that would have required a, a super bespoke pipeline in the past and makes them available in a more general sense. But the intelligence and the ability for it to like. I would say the robustness and the ability for it to handle different situations and run for long periods of time is still uh, just not there yet. I think it's a reasonable, reasonable vote uh, for the right one this time. It could, you know, th this one could have gone either way for me. I would have accepted uh, about the same as well. I think it has gone more than five votes, which means it's really enjoying this process. That's a good good point to say. Uh, viewers, we know, we're always looking for votes. We're always adding new models all the time. We recently added uh, the new uh, Claude Sonnet model, and uh, Codex is coming next. And so if you want to cast your own votes, go ahead and see if you agree with agent mode here. All righty. So uh, it, it wrapped up. And like again, after we were able to work through some of those initial issues with agent mode, uh, it doesn't fail every single time, right? Like the, the thing can work. But is it able to do useful, long-running tasks? No. Is it quick enough to help you quickly do smaller tasks? Not yet. So uh, the promise is here, my feeling so far, is the promise is here, but this thing was not ready for prime time. And it'll be interesting to see how this like sort of jumping the gun launch affects the long-term success of the product in a space that's becoming more and more crowded all the time with these AI-enabled browsers. I think that's broadly correct, right? I, I, I agree. Uh, it seems like... I can't quite figure out why they rushed this out the door, but it does seem quite rushed. It's beneath my expectations of a user. I expect it to have awareness of my browser, especially when I manually click into agent mode. I certainly expect it to reason over tabs. Otherwise, I kind of question the utility of the tabs, because otherwise the tabs just sort of feel like a new thread on ChatGPT already. So I I don't know what... like the the. the the scope of utility goes down when I can only have it reason over a current tab. I can summarize a long post, I can have it do some voting, but I'm a little disappointed there. I'm with you, it feels like the beginning of stapling together some parts of the OpenAI universe into something that will become useful. Is it useful right now? Not really, uh, but uh, there's a path there. All right, so, so overall, some promise here, not blowing us away, we'll see. Maybe over time we'll figure out a little bit more why they released it so early. Are there competitors coming, as Chris was alluding to earlier? It'll be exciting to see the space develop nonetheless, even if I won't be using this product right out the gate right now. Definitely let us know in the comments what you find with this product. Uh, is it useful for you? Is agent mode stable enough for any use cases that you have yet? Is it saving you time anywhere? Uh, we're always trying to find new use cases for these tools and would be excited to hear that feedback as well. So definitely like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel to follow along. We've got uh, rumors that Gemini 3 is coming out this week. So if you want to stay up to date, definitely subscribe to the channel. It helps us grow. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks, everybody.